Happy Christmas. Welcome back. It's 9.42 in the morning on Christmas Day, of course. Now, while we're, while we're recovering from uh, Ada McGee's latest attempt to make Christmas cocktails, we're going to go through some of the day's headlines with journalist Benjamin Butterworth and the political commentator <coughs> Conan Tomlinson, who Can are I back say, with us again. Go on. I had that cocktail. That was very strong. I mean, that had more than enough tequila in it. I had this tiny sip and I couldn't take any more. I am sat Ada in an unbelievable a... amount of coconut over yeah. here, by the way. Just so you know. <laughs> oh, God. It really is a white Christmas. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. You went for that. There we go. Christmas um, chaos. Moving on from that. Uh, right, we're going to whiz through some of our papers. Um, where are we starting? Benjamin, uh, we've got... Look, all I've got as a headline here is <laughs> Undercover Santa Hells Bus Peruvian Drug Gang. Right. I mean, that is the story. You know, usually Santa comes down the chimney, but in Peru he comes through the front door with a battering ram. Uh, so there were uh, these this drug gang and they... The, the police decided to come in in Santa hats, right. Santa outfit, the full Santa outfit. I think we've got the video there. Uh, and broke in with a sledgehammer to expose the drug gangs, which is a big problem in Peru. So, you know, I think this will be a, a real present for the people Drugs are of Peru. a problem in South America, are they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, breaking news. <laughs> uh, and look at that, if, if you're watching on television. So it's the Santa Claus copper comes in dressed like that uh, and managed to arrest them. I think they'd been dealing in cannabis and cocaine, I think. Uh, and there they are, they were arrested. So so why do you think um, the dress up? Why Santa? Well, it's Christmas, well, Emily. Yeah, but that doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm well, not even going to dignify that with an answer. Do you know what? In this day and age, police getting the message out, the videos they put online can have a big effect. Yeah. You know, it can show they're doing their job. It can, can highlight to people that are doing illegal Ill illegalities that they shouldn't do it. And you know, the whole world is watching Santa and his sledgehammer. That's uh, true. So How many views has that got? Well, Millions, loads, I'm sure. loads, loads. Connor, I'm whizzing it over to you now. I get another headline. Hundreds of cars form giant Christmas tree in Russia's Krasnoyarsk. Go on. <laughs> Bless you. Uh, uh, yeah, I've uh, got a video of this as well. So this is a giant car cavalcade that's got all their lights on, they're trying to do something festive for a display. Though it was pointed out before we went on air that because Russia are following the Orthodox calendar, actually today isn't their Christmas day. Their oh, Christmas wow. day is on December the 7th, which it January. is actually... January the 7th, sorry. There we go. Uh, which is actually the, the full Christmas period, according to mm. Orthodox Christianity. So they're, they're quite preliminary, but it looks... I think nice it's important that. to get the overview of this, isn't it, really? So they've got... Uh, this is supposed to be what? A giant Christmas tree, is it? Yeah. It's quite difficult to tell at the moment because that, to be honest with you, looks like the M6. <laughs> I think it's going to put a lot of their logistical, uh, logistical <laughs> minds into the war effort rather than this. But I've, sat, I've sat in that for hours previously <laughs> just trying to get home. That's, that's how well. many lanes the M25 should have. Yes, <laughs> yes. And there's a firework display as well. Um, lovely. I mean, it's nice. It is nice. Um, so I was, I was going to say, well done, well done, Russia, but I don't know if you can really say that these days, can you? Yeah, um, Russia's, got, Russia's got some amazing cultural exports, but I'm, I'm not sure it's car Christmas tree is... <laughs> no. Is no, a bit of a fail there. Can you think if you had to sit in that for hours and hours just so that you, you could get, get out? Then you get out and see the video and you're like, oh, it doesn't even look like a Christmas tree. No, I think the threat of if you don't, we'll arrest your family would probably uh, <laughs> make you do so, it. So uh, try a, again next year. A sledgehammer Santa will be on the way to <laughs> Now, can we, can we do... Um, Benjamin, a yes. bit of a, a sad story, really. Oh. The whole world is celebrating Christmas, but not Bethlehem. So the tourism minister in Palestine has said uh, that, as you say, he said, unfortunately, this year we're receiving Christmas without tourists from around the world and without Palestinians from other governments uh, because of the war in Gaza, uh, because, of course, Bethlehem. Mm. Uh, is mm. affected by this. And the Pope Francis also posted on Twitter last night. Uh, he said, Our hearts are in Bethlehem, where the Prince of Peace is once more rejected by the futile logic of war. And, you know, it is important to remember, you know, this is a day that is people feel in many different mm. ways. But the place where the story of Jesus, you know, starts is in a terrible state at the moment. And whatever you think about the clash that's happened in the last two months, uh, yeah. The children that live there that should be having the joy of Christmas today are having that denied mm -hmm. because of decisions by adults. And I think it's right to Absolutely. remember that. Absolutely right to remember that. And we had um, a man email in earlier from Bethlehem, did we? Uh, not? We did actually. Yes, yeah. I, mean, I think he was called Paul. If you're not called Paul, sorry, but sorry, thank you very Paul. much anyway. Maybe. Emailed in uh, from Bethlehem. Um, Connor, I know you're. I think I'm right in saying you're quite religious, very religious. Uh, Practising meaning attempting Catholic, so I'll do my best. Okay, yeah. And there is a. Tra kind of tragic irony, isn't there, really? Which is, 
the place where a lot of it began for you know, some of the major religions, really, is, is one of the most hotly contested, war-torn yeah. places on Earth. Christmas, you know, about remembering the, the birth of Jesus Christ and tolerance and love and acceptance and all of this stuff. You know, currently, rockets flying left, right and centre around that. Yeah, and also of the major religions currently in conflict over the Holy Land, Christianity's not the one in no, the, the conflict, so it's, it's quite literally caught in the crossfire. But this is one of the great difficulties of the conflict. It's all parties believe that they have a storied, holy, divine right to entitle the land, and so that's what makes negotiating any kind of ceasefire that everyone from the UN to the Conservative Party are now calling for. It's a very fraught issue. I don't see how it's going to be resolved anytime soon, sadly. Connor, can I stick with you, please, and mm. just ask you about the Doctor Who story? <laughs> we have a, a new doctor, am I right? Look, yep. I'm going to hold my hands up here. People are going to shout at their TV screens. I, I have never watched an episode of Doctor Who. What? Why do you think it doesn't do it for you? Um, just because it's bonkers and completely unrealistic. And you know what did it for me was once, very quickly, I was working as a local journalist and I had to go round to the UK's third largest collector of Doctor Who material. <laughs> so that's what we're already scraping the bottom life. of the barrel there. Yeah, it was a two-room or three-room council uh, flat and uh, one of the room was full of Doctor Who memorabilia, the other room was full of Marilyn Monroe memorabilia. Right. It was not a pleasant Bit experience. Bit of a strange place. So it put me right off. Anyway, Connor, go on. Yeah, it sounds like a small flat, but bigger on the inside. Doctor Who viewers will get that joke. Uh, oh. Yeah, so the show has been <laughs> absolutely <laughs> dreadful in the last few years. The Christmas specials were a staple ever since David Tennant's <laughs> debut in 2005 now. Wow, I feel absolutely ancient. But the most recent 60th anniversary specials have been dire. They've screwed the continuity and they've cemented the fact that William Hartnell, the Doctor that started off in the 60s, is no longer the Doctor, uh, the first Doctor. We don't even know who it is. They made Isaac Newton black, for Lord's sake. And then now they've got brand new Doctor N N Kuti Gapwa. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing his name, so I apologise. And I just don't have much hope for the new series going forward, because the old showrunner, Russell T Davies, that brought it back, used to be a great writer, has since come back and said, oh, actually, um, we can't have Davros anymore, because Davros, being half man, half cyborg, apparently it represents all wheelchair users, so yeah. we need to just have him walk around. Well, Connor, you will know as well as I do that some of our viewers say that uh, Benjamin Butterworth is the wokest man on GB News. And Benjamin, I say what do you them... think about the, uh, the, the way Doctor Who's gone. Look, Emily, people call me the wokest man in Britain and I say, please, don't assume my gender. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well done. That's well one. done. That's one for a Christmas cracker, I think. <laughs> oh, you are certainly a bit of a woker, aren't you're you? You're fabulous. You may have no gender, but you're fabulous. Do you know what? I, I watched the uh, an 60th anniversary episodes of Doctor Who, which were written by Russell T Davies, and I thought they were fantastic. I had stopped watching it at Christmas because it got really boring. It, it, you know, it just wasn't that impressive. But Russell T Davies, you might think he's a wokey or whatever, but he's an incredible writer, mm. and so I'm confident that it, I'm going to watch it tonight or re-watch it over the next coming it's of days. It's all about the script, isn't it? The script has to be good, and I'm hoping that EastEnders have nailed it. Uh, well, EastEnders... Their Christmas special. EastEnders of uh, their Christmas special. Apparently, someone's dying, apparently, in EastEnders. Someone's always dying Or someone will be pregnant, or probably yeah. both. It's or both. Every year. There'll yeah. be a divorce. Yeah, no, I remember. I, what was the uh, famous one? You're not my mother. Yes, I am! Yes, I am. That was, that was one I used to watch it the... religiously. Mm, indeed. Um, OK, all right, well, look, thank you very much. Thank um, you oh, so and much. you've been threatening to give us some presents oh, for a I while, have. but yeah. I think we're out of time. Oh, I've yeah. got a present for you, too. Oh, we've got presents for you, too. Well, luckily, we've still got an hour and ten minutes on this show, so I'm sure we will Fantastic. do this. We'll, next one. we'll be exchanging gifts. Make sure you keep your wonderful pictures coming in of your lovely family scenes. Uh, oh, in fact, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Uh, Michelle, is it Michelle? This is my granddaughter, Aww. Hattie, aged four, at her nativity yesterday. Yes, nativity. So it's Stephen's Church in Blackpool, wonderful part of the world, and uh, great to see uh, children taking part in the that nativity. That is so sweet, and that's what we wanted. We wanted nativity exactly. pictures. But Rittle in Essex says, here are our two beautiful grandchildren, Callie, aged four, and Ollie, aged just eight months. Oh, they're having a cuddle by the tree. Oh, Isn't there that you go. sweet? Aww. Well, I hope Santa managed to give everything that they ever wanted. Stephen in Hull says, this is our beautiful granddaughter, oh, Ava. look at her. Oh, <laughs> opening up. She looks delighted with whatever that is. She is. And I'm liking the little hair piece in there as well. Can I just say, what a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful place the GB Views inbox is at the it moment. It is. It is full of family love, as it should be. Uh, Maria in Derby, Chanel, what have we got here? She says, Merry Christmas. Philip and Mabe finally met after seven years. Oh, they God. made the gingerbread house 
from scratch. I'd like to know the story behind that. If they've met after seven years, I wonder what's been uh, what's been happening yeah, there. Yeah, but... dish the details. Oh, they're, they're cousins. cousins. I'm guessing it now. Here now, they're cousins. Granny Annie is on. Granny Annie says, "This is my Christmas festive food." So, what's she got? Right, smoked salmon and veg pie. Yum. Yes. Yorkshire puds. Yes. Yes. Mm. Roast tatties. Yes. Well done. Now, I'll be round in about 20 minutes, Granny <laughs> Annie, so I will see you there. And, we don't uh, know where is she is, so you never know. She could be round the corner. I'll track her down. <laughs> I'll track her down anyway. Right. All right, well, that's enough of that. Still to come, <laughs> it has been quite mild across the UK this Christmas morning. But could there be a little tiny chance of some snow in the next few days? We'll find out next. Yes, make sure you stay tuned. <laughs>